Hey everyone, how's it going? Here with Dean, the Master Breeder again. And today, he is going to take home, I would say, probably his favorite African cichlid, or one of his favorite African cichlids. And you know, Dean's not really known for African cichlids, but this is a special sure. fish that he's been wanting for a while now. Well, since you had him. Since I've had him, so he's, <laughs> so, he's been wanting him for a while. about two years, right? Yeah, <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're gonna uh, catch some of them and uh, send some home with Dean, so. Yeah, so so basically, I tried to get him to ship them to me, you know, and, and Zenzo's kind of like I am. I don't ship fish. <laughs> yeah, so for those yeah. of you that ask about shipping fish, that's a negative. We've right. tried it before. I've shipped fish a couple times successfully and even shipped some to him unsuccessfully one yeah. time. So um, it's just... Right. Too, we're not, I'm not set up to ship fish online. Well, so. you know, and, and I have to be honest, right now where we're at, shipping is just a disaster it's not reliable it's not reliable yeah, at all at all so uh, like i mean even when he shipped them i should have had them the next day and it was like three days three or, or four days yeah yeah, yeah. so mm -hmm. um so what we're going to do is uh, i'm going to pack these fish up and we will i'm going to carry them on the airplane with me and i've done that several times I'm, I'm heading from san francisco back to seattle today so we'll we'll pack them up we'll all right from there sounds good so let's uh Watch the master pack some fish. Right. So it's these guys that I really like. Uh, gold Ocelotus Correct. Shellies. I mean, you've got these other Shellies. I've had these before. Um, I played with Shellies a long, long time ago. I mean, it's probably been over 20 years ago. And I haven't done it since. And these ones just fascinate me color-wise. And so... Back at my place, I intend to put these in the tank behind my desk because I think they're always active. They're always doing something. So Zenzo has successfully spawned these obviously several times because we're going to net. Well, actually, they've already been netted, but they're coming out of his grow out tank over here. So it's my job to put them in the plastic bags and get them ready to head to Seattle. Yep, because you're definitely a better bagger of fish than me. It's not well, one we'll of see. my strengths. We'll see shortly here. So I'm going to grab the box. There's, um, it's actually not really a box, but if I'm not mistaken, it's time for a commercial. All right. Yeah. Where do they get those? Where do you get these? This is the new unbreakable Lee's specimen container, large size. Yep. Um, I believe these are only available through the co-op. Aquariumcoop.com. That's it. And the cool thing is, well, I'm not going to do it, but look back at some of the old videos uh, where we were kicking these around the warehouse. They don't break. Yeah, this is actually kind of a bendy, it's flexible... Like a, a flexible one. I think it's made out of Lexan or something right. like that. So inside, Zenzo's already caught eight of these little guys for me. Uh, four males and four females, actually. We, <laughs> we don't know that. I'm just saying that. That would be awesome. <laughs> actually, it would be better if you had like one or two males. One or two males and the rest yeah. females, right. So we're going to go, and we're just going to use this surface right here for a work area. Now, I'm going to take these, and I'm going to put them in two different bags. Uh, we've got some poly filter. These are just like little one-inch cubes of poly filter. Uh, that's just going to be basically in there to absorb um, any impurities that happen in the six hours from now to when they get in the tank water. I tend to just wet this first, and then we'll put it in. Special thanks to one of the stores we were in for plastic bags. I don't know about you, but I always roll the edge, edge, edge down first. Do you? I don't, but I'm going from now on <laughs> because they always collapse on me. Yeah. Good tip. You know what we don't have, Zenzo? What's that? A thing to hold this bag in. Ah. Oh. What do you need? Another specimen container. I got one. Oh, perfect. It has crabs in it. I got it. Uh, that's true. I can fix that. Be right back. Okay, so we're going to take, uh, we're going to put four in, in each bag. So we're going to take two bags of four each. And right now I'm basically just getting water. Oh, and a fish. Are these jumpers, Zenzo? 
Not really, but um, I would definitely keep a lid on the aquarium. I would not have them in an open top. As if they get spooked, they'll they'll leap. Okay. Or if there's any, you know, fighting, then they might, right. you know. Right. Need a little bit more water in there, but we'll do that like this. No fishies, just water. We could always scoop more out of the aquarium too. If we need it. We'll decide we'll decide that after we uh yeah, we might need one more cup. So these four are going in this guy. Come on, guys. There you go. So that might be a little bit too much water. So I, I tend to do about uh, one third water, two thirds air, and I can see that I've got about half a and half. half. About a half. Yeah. Now, why do you want the ratio of one third to two thirds? Uh, because they will go through the uh, air faster than the water will foul. Right. So I think a lot of people have the impression that more water is better, but actually it's the air, the oxygen that you want to have in the air, in the bag. Right. So so if I'm delivering locally, I will give them more water um, than, uh, than air, because I know the fish are only going to be in the bag a half hour. Right. But we're going to take these on an airplane. It's going to be pressurized, you know, going through all of that. If there's any delays or anything, right? Yeah, traffic. So we're going to go about that full. And we need a little bit more water in this bag. Yeah, I think that's about right. Okay. Next, we're going to drop the poly filter in there that's been pre-wetted. And then we're going to do the famous famous tape trick. This is a cool trick which I've used a few times after watching you do it and it does make a yeah. big difference. So typically if I was to seal this bag up right now, it's going to have these sh sharp corners. And as this gets rolled around and stuff, those are the corners that very well could catch a fish and it could get stuck there and basically either get crushed or if it rolled all the way over, it could be out of the water and stuck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use tape to square off these corners um, and, and then we're gonna double bag each one of these. So to do this, you don't want to blow into the bag. Because you're blowing in what? CO2. Right. These guys need oxygen. So I just let the bag inflate. And then grab it. I want a little more air in there. So I'm going to do that. Sometimes it takes more than once. Lots of times it takes more than <laughs> once. If you happen to have your air pump, you can just... That's use, what I do that, is I just use the air, air line. Yeah. There so we that, go. That's better, right? Now, I'm really weird about how I do this. I've just been doing it this way forever. I go around, pull it tight. Then I go around and around and around. And as I'm going, I'm going down on the bag. So it's keeping the bag tight. I fold that over. And then just use all the rest of the rubber band there. So you can't do the pop the rubber band trick off that, that Corey does. Right, this is, on, yeah. I mean, this, the rubber band's gonna stay. Right. So there's the bag. Uh, let's get the other one bagged up really quick. Some people will tie knots in their bags. Um, I like rubber bands. Always done it this way. But bagging fish is like, everybody does it differently. So. Yeah. So 
they're, they're not a hundred percent tight. There's still a little bit of squish to them so that when these go up in the airplane, they're going to get tighter and looser by the air pressure, right? Right. So the next step now, obviously this is the reason to square off. If the fish are down like this, you're fine. There's nothing to get caught on. Right. But if they're like this, they can get caught in this corner if it gets squished or caught in either corner down here. So we're just gonna square those corners up. And it doesn't take but a little tiny piece of tape. And what kind of tape do they need? Uh, you can use masking tape, packing tape, scotch tape, anything that will stick to the plastic. I usually take the tape Let's take this silver thing off of here right now, yeah, okay? Yeah, don't need that anymore. Good idea. So I usually take the tape, lay it down, and I'm gonna take this bag, and I'm just going to set it right there. Then I pull up, and tape. Then I'm gonna do the other one. Set it right there doesn't need to be perfect, just needs to be a corner made. Now the nice fish have bottom. no corner to get caught in, okay? Now, we're gonna double bag these. We don't have to square the second bag's corners, if that makes sense to anybody. It makes sense to me, totally. Right, because they're not in the second not bag. not in the right. second bag. The second bag is just for for me and for you. A little you extra security. To feel safe, to right. feel safe, yeah. Just plop it down. Make sure you don't squeeze a fish in there. I have done that. It's not a pleasant experience when you get home with it. Like so. I think those Perfect. will get home with me alive. Still a little water in this one, we'll get rid of it. Double bagging, if you're if you want to be careful, you just turn it 90 degrees. Now I know some people some people will go this way. Right. Is there a reason why you would do either or in your opinion? So if you go this way, it's because of what I'm gonna do right now, because it's easier. Okay. Uh, but actually, I'm not going to do that. And you know why I'm not going to do that? Because when I hand these bags to the airport for inspection, mm -hmm. I want them to hold on to this end. Bottom, okay. Right? Yep. So I'm going to try to get it in here like this. It takes a little bit more work this way, but it will go. Maybe. There, it's... there we go. There is a trick to this too, which I, I have a piece at home. Do you suck the air out with the air tube or something? Or if you take a piece of rigid airline tubing, yep, and just slide it down beside. Let the air escape. Yep, it'll just. But this this will still work. It'll go in there eventually. Maybe. There it there goes. Go. And all of a sudden it'll just drop in there. Perfect. Looks good to me. Nice and tight. And then again we're we'll just do the same thing Same rubber band there. trick. Yep. Now, because you're flying on the airplane, we talked about labeling the bag. Yeah. Somewhere we need to know what fish is on the, in there, just in case they ask. And, and so we would want to do this so that people, so that there's not a banned fish or something, right? Right. right. I mean, because the, if, if chances are they're going to look at that and they're going to say, okay, you got four little fish, okay, go. Right. But if you get the wrong inspector, let's just say, 
he's going to say, okay, what are these fish? Are they on the CITES list? And uh, I mean, I've had that done coming across the Canadian border. Sure. And, you know, basically sat there for three hours waiting for a fish and wildlife person to come. Got to make sure you're not bringing that Asian arowana back over from Canada, right? Right. <laughs> and it was, it was literally rams, you know. So. Right. And for the trip, and this will be the bag that we ride on. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. We're going to take this larger bag. We're going to put the smaller ones inside the larger one. And we're just going to seal this up. And this is basically your water stop. Right. If, if anything was going to happen. To keep your suitcase from getting wet or something, yeah. right? Yeah. You do have to take these in carry-on only. So, um, and this one I'll just rubber band one time in case they want to take it out. Right. And we're going to go like that. Now what, I, what I'm going to do, you think they will safe, we, we were talking about putting them inside this. Yeah, it's just let's another just, layer of insulation there. Yeah. Perfect Whoa, fit. Whoa, it's perfect. Okay, so let's go backwards. What is this? It's like just a little insulated liner. Insulated liner. I think I got that when I got something from Aquarium Co-op. I don't remember. You may have. What it was what was in it so last time i went i took the fish i put them in here it's just a grocery bag just a, a yeah grocery bag with a relatively solid bottom on it and i put my jacket around them but this time we're going to do this in this little insulated liner kind of fold it over like that and we'll do that. And I'll probably still put my jacket in there. We could actually just write uh, the name of the fish on a piece of tape Paper. and yeah, and put it right there. Right. Yep. Good idea. And I think we'll be set to go. I'm off to the airport now. Just like that. Awesome. Cool. And we didn't have to ship fish. Perfect. That's the best part. Win-win. Win-win. Alrighty. Right. We're live. There. We're live. Well, we're video. We're, yeah, we're, which is so much better. <laughs> and these outtakes are really good to put at the end. Right, right. So.